So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mobility of the future is about regaining and keeping freedom. Giving a keynote at the Berlin Falling Walls conference yesterday, I asked myself how we can overcome the walls between cars and cities. And there is a lot of challenges, but there is a lot of opportunities awaiting for us. The original idea behind the automobile was to travel faster and more convenient from A to B. And what do we face today? Traffic jams that keep people inside their cars on the streets of mega cities for up to one week or one month a year. The search for parking space that accounts for another week we lose every single year. Plus, the impact of mobility on our planet. We can only afford individual mobility in the future if we make it sustainable. It's all about finding new efficiencies and efficiency formulas, using space, time, resources as smart as possible. And it's not about banning traffic or setting up random rules such as car-free days. Without individual mobility, we would all lose our freedom of choice. And without mobility, our economy would probably stop. How can we reinvent individual mobility in a way that cars will remain objects of desire? Cars that positively contribute to the city's developments. We would not be Audi if our answer wasn't Vorsprung durch Technik. With Audi e-tron and Citron, we are pursuing the goal of emission-free and hassle-free driving. Intelligent onboard assistance and Audi Connect services enhance time, efficiency and safety. Just think of navigation systems that are updated online or think of traffic lights that connect with cars so that the driver always has green lights on his journey. Here in Berlin, every third traffic light is already compatible with our new traffic light technology. It's about autonomous parking and autonomous driving, both at quality of life as well as safety and space to our cities. You won't believe how much smaller parking garages can be when a car won't need our presence in there anymore. And in the near future, you won't have to keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time. That constant stop and go in traffic jams can be very tiring. And in a spectacular world premiere three weeks ago, we arranged for an Audi RS7 to drive without a driver at race speed on Hockenheim racetrack. Not only our products, but also our new mobility offers can be answers to the needs of people living in cities and urban areas. People keep asking me about our position on car sharing. We don't want to imitate rental car services. We would a premium customer want to share with with another premium customer, with a good friend. In Stockholm, we have just launched Audi Unite. We address a new generation of urban customer groups and give them flexible access to cars with a true premium experience. Up to five friends, co-workers or neighbors choose one car and share it. And it could be an R8. Our smartphone app integrates driving into people's digital life. They can reserve the car and locate it online. We take care of washing, insurance, tax and service. Audi Select is an innovative mobility offer for people who want to reward themselves without any long-term obligations. Audi Select allows customers to drive up to three cars per year. 
at an all-inclusive monthly rate. And Audi Select offers a new access to our product range, from the Audi A3 Sportback e-tron to a high-performance car such as an R8. And then we have a new corporate car sharing model called Audi Shared Fleet. We provide companies with a fleet paid per use without any basic fees. Employees can use the cars as well for private purposes and pay themselves. New technologies, new services, and a new approach to mobility in cities. One thing is sure, we must not use yesterday's tools to solve tomorrow's problems. The car will have a permanent place in the urban environment only if we can convince cities and their citizens that it belongs there. Therefore, we have to analyze positively the chaos of a city. We will soon find out the so-called chaos is an order we do not yet understand. This work enables us to bridge public and private transportation. In the future, switching from one form of mobility to another must not take more than two or three minutes. Our mission is to decode the DNA of urban mobility. This consists of technological, political and of cultural aspects. In 2010, we started working with the mega cities of the world in the Audi Urban Future Initiative. We paved the way for four global teams to participate in this year's Audi Urban Future Award. The Urban Future Award team in Mexico City is questioning whether individual mobility can solve problems it has caused in the first place. Therefore, an urban planner, a data specialist, and a city think tank started a large crowdsourced mobility database with a population of more than 21 million people. The main issue of this mega city is traffic jams. Much more space will be left on our streets when traffic one day manages itself to spread evenly. To make that happen, we need to merge and synchronize public, private, social and corporate data. Cars will collect data for us in order to identify patterns of mobility. Then the city will become predictable and we can take decisions based on solid information. The common data platform and new algorithms will be the core of the new operating system for the city. The second nominee team is from Somerville near Boston, Massachusetts, where space is today a rare good. This team has been involved in the planning of a brand new district. I see two main questions related to their project. What is the logic of investments for the infrastructure of connected mobility. The investor of a new development area is willing to buy a fleet of cars with autonomous parking service for future tenants because this technology saves 30% of space in the garage. The second question, what is the logic of urbanizing technologies? Urbanizing technologies means tailoring them for future city needs. While my industry today is taking decisions on cars for 2020 onwards, city planners today are laying the foundation for cities of the 2030s. Therefore, it is important to synchronize innovation cycles and planning horizons. The Boston team developed methods for simulating the positive effects of innovations on the consumption of space. This allows us to calculate gains in efficiency and a totally new architecture might be the result. In Seoul, 
South Korea. Our third nominee studied the impact of digital life on the traditional values in Asia. The district of Gangnam serves as a trend laboratory. Bright and shiny screens on every building, people constantly using their smartphones, all in all, a new digital lifestyle. Understanding the trends of Gangnam helps also to predict the future. In a media-driven world, how can the car become a social communication tool as well? Today, a car is a symbol of status. The bigger, the better. Tomorrow, the car might become a truly smart and social mobile device and partner. An interface to the city, displaying the mood and life of its driver and how the society benefits from him or her. Our team four here in Berlin explored the question, how can various modes of transportation, public and private, form a smart network? Especially when bridging the last mile, the team had the idea to offer a car sharing service with autonomous driving for the last mile in a business district. Our individual freedom will be increased if we all share a lot more. People will share more private data if they know two things. They help the whole of the society and they will benefit themselves. We spoke to elevator manufacturers who use algorithms based on individual destinations. That's how they predict future streams of mobility and control their elevators. Just imagine how much better you could control traffic if every one of us shared where he or she wants to go in the near future. This will result in self-optimizing, self-learning systems. Ladies and gentlemen, those four different cities stand for thousands of others worldwide. In 2015, we will continue our work in the Audi Urban Future Initiative and call for urban planning partnerships all over the world. I'm very pleased to see that more and more local governments want to set up smart cities with the latest technologies. This is why Joseph Curtadone, the mayor of Somerville, Massachusetts, for example, is also here today. Thank you for coming. It's not about upgrading the infrastructure of concrete and steel. We want the next leap in mobility, and therefore our technologies aim to reduce the space car will require, optimize the traffic flow, and help making urban mobility sustainable. So new networks between cities and cars will improve the quality of urban life. And therefore, we call the cities to join our urban agenda. We will develop close partnerships with selected cities. And premium in future means more space in cities and more time for the citizens. Thank you very much.